السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الحمد لله. الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى. خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اجتبى. أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما مثل الحياة الدنيا كما إن أنزلناه من السماء فاختلط به نبات الأرض فاختلط به نبات الأرض مما يأكل الناس والأنعام حتى إذا أخذت الأرض زخرفها وزينت وظن أهلها أنهم قادرون عليها أتاها أمرنا ليلا أو نهارا فجعلناها حصيدا كأن لم تغن بالأمس كذلك نفصل الآيات لقوم يتفكرون صدق الله العظيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Again and again in Quran al-Kareem gives us the example of this world so that we can understand the reality of it And in many different ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries to explain the reality of this dunya to us And not only that he mentioned it in different ways, the same examples he mentioned it repeatedly in different ways also, that hopefully it would get into our mind and we would at least think about it. This dunya, the way it is, once it gets into the mind, it doesn't allow anything else to get in it. When the person is stuck with this dunya, then he cannot think of anything else. And to him it seems like everything for me is just to acquire it. If I get this, this is all I want. And there is nothing that I am thinking about at this time. I have no time for anything else at this, at this time. Really people who instead thinking about it and instead pulling themselves out of dunya a little bit, they can appreciate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in Quran. And they can really realize how they were lost, how this thing was just getting them away from everything. And their life was totally useless and meaningless. And as they come towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they see the beauty of their own life, they understand their own importance. Just like a person who may have closet full of shoes and full of coats, clothing. If you open any drawer in the house, all of those are totally full, no room to put anything else. All the walls have been decorated, no place to put no more and nothing more on these walls. And yet the person keeps on going through all kind of stores or the flyers, going through the internet, going through everywhere where he can find more and more things that he can acquire and anything he sees, he feels like, I want to buy this too. I want to get this one too. Now I want this one. There is no more room in your closet. Where are you going to put it? Really, there is no more room. 
people are buying bigger house only to put more stuff. So you're going to spend there, you're going to spend here. It's time to buy a bigger house, it's time to buy the more, more merchandise now and more stuff to put in the house. And the person is never satisfied. And you ask this person, what's the purpose of having this shoe? He says, this is, you know, this matches this color. So, we wear it for these type of occasions. How about the other pair of shoes? You have ten different ones. And for each different shoe that he has over there, he has a reason why he has that one. I have this coat, I wear it at the beginning of the winter. This one is a rain coat. This one is a winter coat. This is for the snow. And we have a reason for all of these. Now, if you ask the person, what is the purpose of your existence? What are you doing in this world? And right there, the person may be in coma for a minute. Doesn't know what is he doing with his life in this world. All he's doing is just collecting all of these things. As if the purpose of his life was just to collect these things, nothing else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, the reality of this world is, وَمَا الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُوبِ And in other ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it دَارُ الْغُرُوبِ What does it mean? Entering the house, where everything is fixed. Just imagine, you're being in a place, in a house, someone says, you know, get into this house, and try to recognize, differentiate between the real things from the fake ones. So you see a lot of fruit over there. Apples, bananas, oranges, whatever else is there. And all of it, it looks real, real, but it's all fake. You don't see it fake until you touch it. When you touch it, you realize it's fake. You may even see people standing there. And you feel like this is a real person. But when you touch it, you'll realize it's fake. You see lions over there, you see cats over there, you see dogs over there. Everything is fake. You see something looks like a beautiful bat, but you can't sit on it. It's gonna break because it's fake. So everything in the house is fake. Just like sometimes you go to the store because they don't want to see the expensive merchandise on the display, so they make a fake one and put it on the display. You touch it, you find out, no, this is fake. It is only for the color. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about this universe, وَمَا الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُوبِ And this house, this world is دَارُ الْغُرُوبِ It's a house of deceiving people. Everything is fake over here. Nothing is real. Everything is fake over here. And everything is trying to attract us and pull us towards this world. This world is full of attraction. It's nothing but attraction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and again used the word zina for this dunya. What does that zina mean? Beautifying it. That this thing is just being beautified. An old woman, maybe in her 80s, she applies all kind of makeup. And she comes out trying to make herself look like a young girl. And maybe from far distance someone looks at her and keeps on looking. You get close over there and you start talking, you hear the words, you want to run away. Now you think, how am I going to get out of this situation? I, I, I wish I never even said hi to her. Now she tells her story. The nature doesn't change. The reality won't go away. But this thing is deceiving us. This is Zarul Guru. Everything is fake. And things are just being too attractive. They're trying to pull us towards themselves. And many times we get pulled towards these things unknowingly. And sometimes we get pulled towards them so badly that the person, even after knowing it's pain, it still wants to hold to it and it still wants to keep it. Fake flowers, fake vegetables, everything. There is fake of everything here. A person used to see in his dream every night that someone comes and that was of course shaitan comes and he says to him listen I know you are working very hard to become wealthy let me show you around the world and show you where the treasures of the world are so you can take whatever you want from it I'll show you all the treasures of the world 
So shaitan will take him and he will start flying with him. So as the person is flying, he gets scared. He's scared because shaitan is flying, carrying him and flying him. So he gets scared and he feeds in his mouth. Every morning he wakes up, he has a wet bed. Wife is getting, losing her temper now. How come you pee in your pants every night? Every morning you wake up, I have to clean the bed. And he tells us, listen, because, you know, I'm working so hard so that we can make a good living and we live in a good way. So here, Shaitan comes to me and he tells me that I'll show you the treasures of the world. So I said to him, sure, let's go. And then he starts flying and it gets too scary, scary for me. So when I'm up in the air, I'm a scared, so I pee in my pants. The wife was wise. She says to him, next time when he comes to you, tell him, I don't want to see no treasure. Bring me a box full of gold. And then only I will trust you. He says, okay, this is what I'm going to do. So he goes to sleep. Now Shaitan comes to him and says, come on, let me show you the treasures of the world. There are few more places that I didn't show you yet. He says, no, no, I don't want to go nowhere. Bring me the box of a gold, full of gold, and then only I will trust you. He said, are you sure you want that? He said, yeah, this is all I want. Give me, give me a box full of gold. He said, don't worry about it, okay, I'll get you that one now. So he shows him a box full of gold. He says, take this. He takes it. He wakes up. And he doesn't want to come out of the bed. The wife asks him what happened. He says, I did what you told me. So then what happened? He told me, he brought me the box full of gold. So I took it. So where is it? He said, when I was carrying it, he said, when I was carrying it, it was so heavy that every day I used to pee, I did number two in my bed now. Because it was too heavy. I couldn't carry it. She says, next time tell him I don't want any money. That was enough. Just go for a tour with him. Don't go for this one. Don't ask him for no money. Now I have to clean the number two also from the bed. This is what this dunya is all about. It's nothing but brings more and more dirt into our life. Mufassirin have raised it. That one said, Naika alayhi salatu wa salam. was traveling with someone. Isa alayhi salatu wa salam said to this person, now we are tired, so let's go and bring some food. So I'm going to just pray, you go and bring some food. He gives them three dinars. And in fact, this reminds me, you know in Arabic language, the first word that was used for money was the word dinar. And Malik ibn dinar rahimahullah, I mean his name is also given dinar. Malik ibn dinar rahimahullah, well known scholar of Islam, he says, there is a reason why Arabs call money dinar. So he was asked, what was the reason behind it? He said, because the word dinar is, com- is a combination of two different words of the Arabic language. Where, did, what, where is the originality? What's the origin of this word, dinar? He says two words. One is deen. So through money, you can get deen. And if you don't, then it's nar. So it's deen or nar. One of the two things. So through the world, world you know, materials that require, either you get your deen and you work for you, make up for your deen, or it's an art for you, it's a fire for you. So Malik is dinar rahimahullah, or in fact I was saying that Isa alayhi salatu wa salam gives three dinar to this person and says go and buy some bread for us, some food. So he went and he bought three bread. He came back, Isa alayhi salatu wa salam is praying. So he says, you know, he says to himself, we are three of us, or two of us, I have three bread, why don't I eat one, and then when he's done, we will share one bread each. And he won't know that I brought three. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran about Isa alayhi salatu wa salam, that, وَأُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا تَأْكُلُونَ وَمَا تَدَّخِرُونَ فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ He used to know what people eat and what people have saved in their homes. So anything you hide in your house, whatever 
Balance you have in your account, Isa alayhi salam will tell you, okay, you pretend that you don't have money, okay, you have 100,000 sitting in your account. And you have 20,000 in your drawer. So he used to tell people of these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him that special marjizah, that he used to inform people of what they're hiding and what they left behind. So after he finished his salah, Isa alayhi salatu wa salam says to the person, did you bring the food? Yes. I brought it. Where is the fear of this? I have two bread, one for me, one for you. So they add one bread each, and he says, where is the third bread? He says, I swear, I have only two. I got only two bread, there is no third one. Okay, don't worry about it. They're walking. Isa alayhi salatu wa salam sees a deer. He calls the deer, come. The deer comes to Isa alayhi salatu wa salam. The person says, what a great miracle Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted you with. He says, yes, alhamdulillah, Allah's blessing that he gifted me with these type of miracles. But where is the third bread? He says, I swear I had only two. You ate one, I ate one. I don't know about the third one. Okay, don't worry about it. They're walking. He goes by a grave. He calls the person back. Qum bi iznillah. It was his miracle too. The person comes out of the grave. And he talks to Isa alayhi salatu wa salam. Isa alayhi salam, this person says, Subhanallah, what a great miracle. People come up, come back from their grave. And they talk to him and says, Yeah, Alhamdulillah, Allah's blessing. Where is the third bread? I don't have the third bread. I had only two. Okay, don't worry about it. They're walking. They see three bricks. Three bricks. Isa alayhi salatu wa salam makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all three bricks become gold. Three bricks, now they are of gold. The person says, Subhanallah, what a great miracle. He says, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless me with these type of miracles. One brick is yours, one is mine, and the third one is for the person who got the third bread. He says, I'm so sorry, you know I was hungry, so I ate the third bread. So he said, now you're telling me, of course it's telling us to get the third brick of gold. Isa alayhi salam says, okay, you take all three bricks. I don't even want the mine. You keep it. And he left. Sometime later he was coming back over there. And he sees four people are dead over there. Three bricks and four people that are dead. Next to these three bricks. Isa alayhi salatu salam has some other companions with him. He asked them, do you know what is this? I said, no. He told them the whole story, and he said, I will tell you what happened after that. After I left him with the three bricks made out of gold, then three people came to him. And they saw that this person here is sitting in the jungle with three bricks of gold. Why don't we kill him and take the bricks? And we can take all, each of us will take one brick made out of gold. So they killed that person right there. Now there are three of them. Three bricks made out of gold, they're enjoying it. They said, let's eat some food first. They're so tired. So they send one person to go and bring some food. He went and is thinking, you know, three bricks, big bricks of gold. Why should I even share it with these guys? Let me poison the food so when I go back, they eat the food and they all die. The both are going to die and I'll take all three bricks. These two are thinking, you know, he wants to get the food. Why we should share the third brick with him? When he comes, we'll kill him and then we'll enjoy the three bricks. We'll take it half and half. So this person, as he came back with the poisoned food, first thing they killed him. So now the second person is dead. Now they eat the poisoned food, so the other two are dead. Four people are dead next to the three bricks made out of gold. Ifa alayhi salatu wasalam said to his followers, this is what dunya does to the followers of dunya. This is dunya does to those who run after it. It kills them and it stays back. People keep on dying on it. How many people are killing each other just for death? And it stays behind, those people are gone. This is the reality. In our life too, until this day, people, those beautiful houses, beautiful castles, they got everything, they are gone, some other people are enjoying it. Where are those people who built it? 
They all are gone. Did they take anything out of it? No, of course. This is what this, this world does for us. It just kills us and goes to someone else. And certain people keep on going after it. We keep on going after this. The person spends the whole life doing nothing but earning this. As I said, there is a reason and purpose of having a watch, having a car, having shoes even. But when you ask the person, what's the purpose of your existence, he has no answer. He doesn't know what he's doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us in Quran. Ya ayyuhal nas, inna wa'ad Allahi haq. فَلَا تَغُرَّنَّكُمُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَلَا يَغُرَّنَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغَرُورِ All you who believe, Allah's promise is true. Whatever He has promised you in the Akhirah is very true. Do not let allow this world to deceive you. Take you away from the Haqq and from the truth. And you forget what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised you in Akhirah and just work for this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, مَا لِي وَلِ الدُّنْيَا What do I have to do this with this world? إنما أنا كراكب استظل تحت شجرة ثم ترك ثم ذهب وتركها. I'm just like a person who is resting under the shadow of a tree for some time. A traveler who's resting under the, under the shadow of a tree after some time he's going to leave and leave the leave, leave the tree behind him. This dunya for me is just like that tree. And real as we see the reality of it. It's nothing but pulling ourselves, pulling us toward itself. It's attraction, really. It's just attraction. Trying to keep on pulling us toward itself. And people are getting pulled, just like a magnet. People are getting pulled towards this dunya so badly that now no more worries about their parents. They don't care about their children. They don't care about their wife or their husband. They don't care about their being, their religion. Nothing that worries them anymore. The only worry, the only worry is the worry of this dunya. I just want